Unusually for a book published by Tokyo Pop, Sayuki opens with a couple of pages written by them explaining a bit about the context and just generally hyping the manga up before you start reading. I felt that this was a nice touch, partly because, no, I would not have been aware that this book was based on a Chinese legend, and partly because it's nice that Tokyo Pop went to the effort to put what we're about to read in context. Not that Tokyo Pop are still suddenly perfect translators in my eyes. Annoyingly, all of the sound effects are left in Japanese with English translations in the back rather than on the page. But that's a tiny fly in the ointment and Sayuki is actually quite good. But simply, Sayuki is a typical action manga. The four main protagonists could loosely be called the heroes and face off against a group of what looked like villains until another group betray the first group and become the real villains. Sayuki's protagonists have to get to the villain's base and stop what is happening there, and it's the villain's job to stop them, usually by throwing at them whatever people they have or can hire. Oh, but not all at once, as villains can only attack in small groups at a time. Sayuki is episodic in nature, and chapters tend to follow the same pattern. The protagonists are heading west. But rather than travel 24-7, they tend to stop at each town or settlement that they come to. They get to meet the people there, and beat up any local antagonists causing trouble. If there were no antagonists, or if the antagonists didn't provide enough material to reach the end of the chapter, then hired assassins will show up and try and kill the cast. Usually, watching the violence teaches at least one person from the town a valuable lesson about life. Oh, thank you, hero. Your violent behaviour has taught me that there is more to life than hatred and violence. Later on in the series, the preaching notes go away, and the antagonist of the week usually has something to do with one of the main cast's backstory, replacing a lot of the preachiness with angst. Note that nothing I've said is actually meant as a criticism. Regardless of how many hundreds of times the things Sayuki does have been done before, Sayuki does them again, and it does them well. The four protagonists are very well characterised. As the plot involves them constantly travelling, there are no reoccurring minor cast members, and the main leads are pretty much the only focus of the story. Because of this, Sayuki's author has gone to a lot of trouble writing both their characters and their relationships, to the point where they are very entertaining, even if left on their own with nothing to do. The villains aren't exactly uninteresting either. As seem to be the norm nowadays, they get some focus and characterisation as well, and even have their own internal subplot which has nothing to do with the main protagonists. Confusingly, while this review is for the full series, the series actually ends with the story half finished. We're not left hanging as the story is continued in the Sayuki Reloaded series. Hence, Say Sayuki Reloaded Volume 1 is actually Sayuki Volume 10. I'm hoping that the continuation will be of the same standard, and I hope to get my hands on it and cover that in its own review at some point in the future.